Hello, Jonah. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm very good. Thanks, Jack. Yeah, you? Yeah, I'm not too bad, buddy. Um, I think before we start, do you just want to say who you are, who you work for, and kind of the relevance of Burbot to you? Yeah, so I'm, I'm Jonah. I'm the technical director at Norfolk Rivers Trust. Um, I've been here nearly 10 years. Um, and probably for nine of those years, we've been talking about bringing Burbot back to Norfolk. Um, mostly with Carl Sayer from UCL in the early days. He, he was the one who, who kind of introduced it to us. Um, and we've been working towards it for, uh, yeah, for, for nine years on and off, um, almost entirely unfunded. Um, and it's been slow going, especially the first few years. We, we had a, a lot of obstacles and nobody was really interested in species reintroductions. But in the last probably three years, that's that's really changed, and there is a lot of interest and support, um, and it's really it's really picked up pace, and it's it's getting really quite hopeful now. Certainly, like with beavers, I mean, beavers are kind of the star species, aren't they? Like, um, but yeah, a lot of kind of re- rewilding, whatever you want to call it, is is gaining kind of more public interest, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. The, the beavers have helped us massively. I think um, ten years ago, very few people would have believed that. You even could reintroduce beavers to Britain. Um, so the same with things like sea eagles and and butterflies and things. Um, so now it's something people know we can do, and it's something people know we should do. And I think because the burbot has been there until so so recently, um, then you know it's, it's it's kind of an obvious one to to go for. I think. Yeah. No. No. Definitely. And I guess what a lot of people want to know is is what's the plan? <laughs> put it put it simply. What's the plan? <laughs> Um, the, so the, the plan is we're, we're, we're getting close, Jack. Um, okay. we've spent the last few years talking to quite a few academic partners, um, about the feasibility of, of actually doing it. Um, in particular, a guy called Tom Worthington, who did his, did his PhD on, on the feasibility of Burbot reintroduction. Um, talking to people like Rewilding Britain, Natural England, the Environment Agency, and at first trying to trying to build some sort of consensus that, that it's something people people thought was possible and that we should do um we're never going to know whether it'll be successful or not until we actually put fish in the river yeah and there's always going to be some unanswered questions but we, we think we're as certain as we can be so the plan is now um to spend the, the next couple of years um trying to make the the habitat on the River Wissey. So the River Wissey is the, the target river for us. Um, that's the one that's been identified as having the best burbot habitat and most likely to succeed. Um, we're planning to spend the next two years improving the habitat on the Wissey, just making it really messy and complex and letting it flood freely and, and do all the things that burbot want and all fish species want actually. Um, and during that time, we, we're going to be um, working towards getting the consents to do it. So we need consent from Natural England, the Environment Agency, CFAST, Fishing Club, the landowner, and all these things. So at, at the same time as improving the habitat, we're going to be working towards actually importing the fish. Um, the plan at the moment is that there's a there's a brilliant hatchery in Belgium that I know you've visited recently. Yeah. Um, their fish are, are very closely genetically related to the museum samples from Britain. That's something else that Tom Worthington's shown. Um, and they've been enormously helpful telling us, uh, helping us with things like how do we import them? What are the rearing conditions for Burbot? What life stage do you release them at? All, all that stuff, they, they've been fantastically helpful. So that's the ambition to, to bring fish over and get them in the river in, in maybe two or three years time, I think, after we've really made the most of the habitat that we, that we possibly can to give them the best chance. And the feasibility studies have, have been looking, from what I understand, they all seem very positive. Like there's not been any massive roadblocks, has there? That it's, it's kind of, it should work. <laughs> I say tentatively, but there's no, there's no alarm, alarms, bells ringing at the moment. Yeah, so nothing that, nothing's been shown that, that's going to prevent them from, from being a success. Um, because it's it's because the environment's so complicated and there's so many different factors we can't absolutely say so there's there's a whole host of, of things to look at like water temperature 
yeah. water quality, um, levels of different pollutants, how far the fish can migrate up and down the river and in and out of the river, all this stuff, all these different factors, all of them look possible. It might be there's a, there's a combination of those that doesn't work or facts that we've missed. Um, and we're, we're doing our absolute best to nail that down. But um, and everything's, everything's looking positive and possible, yeah. And again, we're, we're not going to know until we actually put fish in the river. But there's no conclusive answer until somebody tries it. No, no, of course. And I mean, that's, that's good to know, isn't it? And I was going to ask why the whiskey and when, but you've sort of answered all that already, which is, uh, <laughs> which is fantastic. So... Uh, you know, if, if all being well, in the next two to three years, we could very well have Burbot back in Britain. I hope so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, certainly I do too. And I guess the million dollar question is, uh, why? Why should we care? Why should why should people care about the Burbot? Why bring it back? Oh, so so many reasons, Jack. <laughs> if, if trout or salmon had disappeared entirely, people would be absolutely rushing at this. Even roach or dace or something that, that's a bit more yeah. well known. Yeah, so I, I think for, for that reason alone it, it's something that's that's disappeared from our river so recently the last one was caught in 1969 i think so there's plenty of people alive who can remember catching but um for, for me it's, it's just part of the ecosystem it's something that should be there like a, a, a river is, wouldn't be a functioning ecosystem without trout or without kingfishers or without otters or without without any of its species and for me, it's one of those building blocks that we need to put back. Um, it's an attractive thing for anglers, hopefully. Um, there's, a, there's a little bit of concern that, that Berber eat other fish, which they absolutely do. But so do all fish. Every, everything eats everything in there. It's like this warfare. But um, yeah, for me, it's, it's part of the ecosystem and, and something that should be there. Um, and in its own little way, will help make our rivers healthier. No, definitely. And um, certainly... Uh... I guess if anglers are concerned, I'm going to talk about this to Mark as well, but they um, they coexist with all of our fish on the continent. So it's not like they're not, they can't do it. And yeah, like you say, they're just one piece of the jigsaw for everything else. It's not like they're going to come in rivers and, and eat everything. Um, n- nothing like that. So no. I, yeah, it, it's, it's almost like a moral obligation to bring, it was our fault we lost them or we believe it's our fault we lost them. So it's almost fitting that we should bring them back. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah, yeah, um, and ev- everything in there has has co-evolved with Burr, but you know they've they, they were there from the Ice Age until thirty or forty years ago, um, as were the trout, as were the dace, and, and any other species that that you, that you want to name. They all lived together quite happily until humans really started destroying rivers um, <laughs> in the last half century. Yeah. So. Yeah, they the, the, the should just be part of the ecosystem. Um, they, they will eat a lot of things. They'll eat young eels, they'll eat young trout, they'll eat each other, they'll eat young roach and dace. But equally, trout will eat berbert, eels will eat berbert, herons will eat berbert. It's, it's just part of the ecosystem. So one of, um, one of the I, don't, I don't see any problems there. No, no, that, that's just nature, isn't it? And one of the things Johan was saying they found in the continent is they're really good at eating... <laughs> is that your uh, is that your Sorry, dog? Yeah, that's the dogs. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's been plenty of dogs on this podcast. Um, <laughs> but they said one one of the great things with Berbers, they seem to target a lot of the invasive species. So they found where Berber are present in the continent, numbers of topmouth gudgeon, freshwater blenny, and signal crayfish, which is relevant for the UK, um, will go down because they seem to hammer those. So there is a there, you know, if, if people are a bit unsure, that's one good reason, certainly, because they eat invasives. I would really hope so. That they certainly will eat crayfish, and there are signals in the catchment. Um, we think the white clods, unfortunately, were, were lost to plague probably twelve years ago, something like that. Now, yeah. Um, but there's certainly signals there. Um, we've seen in in some of these kind of Fenlandy type rivers as well, like the lower end of the River Nara in particular, where there are big predator fish. The the signals seem to be struggling to really expand the populations and thrive so sorry that's the dog again so yeah i, I hope that i hope they'll have um, those kind of positive impacts here yeah i think so well look keep up the good work jonah i think it's absolutely fantastic what you're doing and, and fingers crossed we can get this fish back yeah i really hope so jack and um, we're trying really hard now and we've got a lot of support so um i think probably for the first time for us it, it's looking realistic now yeah 
And presumably, if people want to find out more, just go to the Norfolk Rivers Trust website. Yes, um, we we did a, a online Burbot event, um, a webinar, and you can find that on there. That's actually got Tom Worthington talking all about the science of it, so that's really useful. Um, and uh, yeah, there's, there's a bit of other stuff from us there as well. Fantastic. Well, thanks for coming on, buddy. That's right, Jack. Thank you very much. Pleasure.